In a recent video, I talked about Japanese soft vinyl figures called Sofubi or Sofubi. And, you know, if you haven't seen that video, if you're not familiar with what Sofubi are, I might suggest that you look at that first to get a little context. But very briefly, they're made, well, at least the ones that I'm collecting tend to be made in very small batches. They're made maybe by a single person or a small company. Uh, they're often difficult to get, and if you want to get them, you may have to wait around until they do a release and then put your name in a virtu virtual hat. And, you know, if it's picked, then you get the right to buy the figure, that kind of thing. These are examples of Sofubi from Shikaru Nakobo, which is a pretty well-known company that makes you know, predominantly kind of kaiju or monster figures in Japan. And uh, these are the only three that I have in my collection at the moment. But I'm showing these to you in particular because I was lucky enough to be selected to purchase one of their lucky bags, so-called, the Fukubukuro. Uh, Fukubukuro are kind of a, a thing where uh, a company or a, or a store will, you know, sell sort of mystery grab bags at the end of the year, well, or the beginning of the new year. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a long-held tradition, and, and Shikaru no Kobo, Kobo themselves have done this for a number of years, I'm told. I was not uh, collecting Sofubi at that point, so this is the first one that I've been able to buy myself, and I'm you know, grateful that I was able to get one. Um, and I thought it would be fun to open it on camera, because, you know, what the heck. So, that's what we're going to do today. I wanted to show you, though, these to give you a little bit of a baseline, first of all, to show you what I have in my collection, and maybe to explain what I'm hoping to get or not get in this mystery uh, bag. So this one here is uh, Garumega. He is basically a sea turtle kaiju, a monster sea turtle. And I assume he's probably meant to be, you know, if a person is this tall, he'd be <laughs> towering above him. Just the way that uh, Godzilla does, or Gamera indeed does. Gamera, you may re uh, be aware of, is a, a sort of a turtle version of Godzilla. Anyway, I just thought this was a really cool figure. He's painted to look kind of like antique wood, I would say. But they do, for these kind of figures, all of these, they do come out with lots of uh, color variations. So I've seen this guy painted like a real turtle, or in all kinds of crazy bright colors and things like that. But this is one of my favorite versions, actually. Uh, over here we have Zagora, who is basically just a... Um, Kind of a Godzilla knockoff, I suppose you'd say. But I uh, I like this one in particular because he's got these additional arms. I really like that. Looks pretty cool. But also he's got this really derpy looking face. Uh, you can see with the single eye and everything. And I also really like this color scheme too. It's got a lot of metallic uh, blues and purples and silvers. And then on his back he's got gold. Fancy. And finally, we've got over here, Marine Kong. And you may not be aware, I was not aware, that Marine Kong is actually the first uh, kaiju monster to appear on Japanese TV. It was in a black and white TV series in the 50s. And he looks pretty much, you know, in that, in that show, he looked exactly like this, more or less. Of course, not this color necessarily. He was in black and white, but uh, I imagine he was probably supposed to be a green color like Godzilla. Anyway, I just like, uh, if you can't tell, kind of derpy looking uh, characters sometimes. Th those are fun. So I've got these three in my collection anyway. Um, I probably would prefer to get something different, but if I get a different colorway, which is very likely, I mean the chances of getting the exact same thing are uh, very small, I think. So if I were to get a different colorway of any of these guys, I would be pretty happy with that too, because I really like these figures. Now, um, to briefly explain about what this lucky bag includes, supposedly uh, it costs, well, not supposedly, it does cost 30,000 yen, which is about roughly a little over $200. And uh, it's supposed to have a value of between 50,000 and 100,000 yen. So that's roughly 350 to 700-ish dollars. So you, you may get a little bit more than what you paid in terms of value, or you may get, you know, hit the jackpot and get a great value. Who knows? I have seen a few other people in Japan who have already gotten theirs and opened them, and they seem to have a, con a combination of painted and unpainted figures and big and small ones. So it's a it's a selection, 
uh, I'm, what I'm expecting is probably to get one uh, big, nice painted figure, similar to one of these, and maybe one small painted figure, and then maybe like three uh, unpainted ones. But we'll see. Um, the Fukubukuro, the lucky bag itself, is supposed to be coming tomorrow if I can trust the tracking information. So we shall see. I'm pretty excited about it, though. Uh, you know, I just I like this company, and they seem to be, I you know, kind of on the on the little bit more generous side in terms of like giving you value for your money. So uh, fingers crossed that they give us something good. Um, now, I do have a couple things that I'm hoping to get, and we can keep, you know, keep an eye out and see if I do get those. One of them is called Yabanjin. It's a two-headed ogre of sorts that I think looks really cool, and, uh, you know, it's nice and large and everything, carrying a weapon. And they've done lots of different color va variations on this one, but uh, he tends to go for about, oh, $275 or so, uh, just for him, which is, you know... A fair amount of money, uh, and so if you were to get one of those in your Fukubukuro, as some people, I guess, have, that would more than pay just for the whole thing, so whatever else you get is kind of gravy at that point. I'm also interested in their Ozaru uh, giant ape figure. I think that looks pretty cool. I like gorillas and so forth, so that's another possibility. I'd also be happy with uh, Gorugo Nado, who is a whale-based kaiju. I think he looks pretty cool. Uh, I would be less happy if I got something like this Izo figure, just because, I don't know, it doesn't really do it for me. Uh, kind of a horror-based figure, which is not quite my thing. Anyway, uh, I think it'll be interesting to kind of play along and see what I end up getting in this uh, lucky bag. So I'll see you when it arrives uh, from your perspective just in a few seconds. Okay, it's actually two days later because we had... Uh, no mail yesterday due to some freezing rain, but it has now arrived, this box. I will, I will say, this is a fairly sizable box. Anyway, what I'm going to try and do is open this up and not look directly at the uh, the contents, which may be tricky, but we'll see. I'm just going to slice open the tape here. And ooh, reach inside. Now it looks as though there's a uh, <laughs> a little note here in Japanese that says thank you for your purchase and so forth. And then they've added a little note in English, which is kind of them. You got one. Congrats, it says. And that, of course, is, um, I guess, their unofficial logo there, the Yabanjin two-headed ogre that I was talking about earlier in the video. So I'm going to try and reach in here. I don't know if I can do it in any way that makes sense because I can't see what I'm doing here, but uh, it looks like there is an actual bag. Oh, there is an actual lucky bag in here. So let us, I guess, get rid of the box itself. Nothing else in here. And we can just reach inside the bag. So it's been stapled shut, but we'll open that up and reach it, reach inside. Ooh, I'm feeling something. Hmm. Let's take this one out first. Oh, wow. This was one that I actually had on my list, too, that I didn't mention. I believe his name is Daizo. He's a, uh, a rhinoceros kaiju, I guess. Very cool. Fully painted as well, so that's cool. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is we'll open the whole thing up and then I will open the individual figures and look at them a little bit more closely at the end. So I'm going to put him aside for now. I'm going to reach in again. Looks like we've got a small one. This appears to be a small monkey figure. I've seen him before, for sure. Can't remember if he has a specific name. But pretty cool. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is that I'm actually not that upset about getting unpainted ones because I've started painting Sofa B figures myself. I've got some 
special vinyl paints and uh, I've done a few already so this would be good to uh, be able to paint myself. So we'll set him aside. Oh wow, okay. This one is pretty gigantic. This one is, I guess, unpainted, but in a variety of almost, yeah, it's kind of a marble colorway here with uh, orange and red, and it's got some uh, glitter in it, it looks like. I can't remember this guy's name, but I'll put it up on the screen here. He looks a bit like, boy, I don't know how to describe it. Reminds me of um, that salt vampire from Star Trek, the original series, if you remember that. All right, moving on. Okay, we got, oh, well, just judging from what I can sort of feel in the rest of the bag, it doesn't look like we're going to get a full-sized Yabanjin like I had hoped, but we did get this smaller one. They have a, a series called the Cube Series that is smaller versions of some of their figures that kind of fit into a, a small cube, and that's what this is. So that's, that's a cool uh, consolation prize, I guess you'd say. I, I like that pretty well. What else do we have? We have... I'm not even sure who this guy is. Some kind of a wolf creature. I don't think I've seen this one. Got three tails. I'll have to look up who he is. But kind of cool looking. Got ooh, another one that's not in a bag. This is, I don't know who this is, but it's a smaller creature. Also unpainted. Not bad. And again, I am looking forward to painting some of these as well. Looks like we've got one more item here. Interesting. So this is something that I have seen. It is kind of a, a dodo. Kaiju, I guess. Fully painted. Not bad. I'll have to put up his... Oh, yes, I forgot. They put the names on the bottom of the feet here. This says uh, Todori. All right, so our first item from the bag was Raizo, and uh, I'm actually pretty happy with this guy. He's from 2017, so not one of their newer figures and probably not one of their more sought-after ones, frankly, but... Really cool looking. Uh, I'm not sure how this comes across on camera, but he's very chunky, you know, impressively sized. Uh, I do kind of wonder with his tail sticking straight out like this and his, you know, his head being like this, this might be a little hard to display on a shelf. I might have to put him sideways or something. But uh, otherwise, pretty nice. I like the paint job. It's kind of a dark purple. I don't know if that comes across, but I like these. Uh, these craters on his back and stuff, and he's got sort of a, a spike here, and then it's broken off here, and you can see the inside there. I think that's really cool. Anyway, uh, definitely the more the most expensive or valuable one in the uh, lucky bag. Originally, well, I should say first of all, I should say it's difficult to tell the prices of these things because. Um, there's no way that I can figure out, even looking at the Wayback Machine, to um, actually see what the prices were for most of them when they were released because of the way the uh, Chicago Nakuobo has their website set up. But I believe this was um, 38,000 yen back in 2017. Maybe not this exact colorway, but, you know, same figure, which was, you know, at the time was especially given the exchange rate at that time, probably over $300. But I've seen it go for a lot less than that on the secondary market recently. So I'm going to just say maybe like $175 to $200 for this guy. Seems like a lot for people who don't collect <laughs> soft vinyl figures, but actually that's kind of uh, on the lower end. But still, um, basically, you know, what I paid for the, the Lucky Bag, a little bit less than what I paid for it. So I'm, you know, pretty happy with that. Next up, I guess we should look at this guy. 
He is called Chiosu, which uh, essentially means bloodsucker. Uh, he's a little difficult to even get into frame because he's so tall like a giraffe. But I really do like this sculpt. I think it's pretty cool. It does remind me of macaroni and cheese somehow, just given this color and the, the way this is sculpted here, especially on his hands. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's made of a, a sort of a marbled vinyl, which I do appreciate. And I don't know if I can get close enough to show it, but there's little subtle uh, bits of sparkles in there, glitter. I'm not totally sure whether I would want to paint this or not. It does have some, you know, things that are just totally just blank uh, vinyl. I don't really have any problem painting. This one is a bit of a judgment call. I'll have to, I'll have to decide on that. But yeah, look at that face. That's something else. This guy, I don't know about pricing. Also not one of their, you know, more sought after ones, which I guess is to be expected given that they're including him in a lucky bag. But I would say maybe a hundred to a hundred and fifty, hundred fifty seems high, hundred hundred and twenty five maybe for this. Uh, again, you know, if you're not a collector of this, that's going to seem really high, but I would say at least a hundred for this, uh, given the size and uh, so forth. Next up we have, uh, I guess, the painted bird guy, Todori. Not sure about value on this, but uh, oh, 30 to $50 probably, given that it's painted. He's not bad. I, I was, I don't know. I go back and forth on this. He doesn't have any articulation except for his head. And the paint job is kind of, I mean, it's well done enough, I guess, but it's dark and it's a little hard to see the details. So I'm not in love with it. Uh, we have also this cube saru i think probably all of these well except for yabanjin here these these smaller uh cube figures are probably around 30 dollars a piece i would say this one is more on along the lines of uh 50 just because of the character people like yabanjin and then we have one final one this little guy igaru i believe is his name I would say, I don't know, 25 bucks maybe. These are all just, of course, uh, estimates. These, you know, these are worth what people are willing to pay for them, generally speaking. So you never know. But I would say uh, overall, let's see here, I haven't really even added this up, but one, two, three. I would say, you know, we're in, we're in the approximate range that they said so like maybe 400 ish dollars if you want to be uh a little bit generous with it of course i'm not really planning on selling these so the value is just sort of for my own uh reference i guess and make me feel better like i'm getting a, a good job of course i mean a good deal i i did um of course have to pay the expensive shipping on this so that's something you have to take into account as well but I think the whole experience, you know, looking forward to getting the, the bag and opening it and uh, so forth, and also getting some of these unpainted figures uh, so I can practice my painting. These are actually going to be, you know, a little bit on the hard side to find. Uh, I don't even think Shikaru Nakobo normally sells just plain unpainted figures, so you'd have to get them in a lucky bag probably. Uh, any, now altogether, I think I'm pretty satisfied with this. It's not a jackpot like I was hoping, maybe getting some, you know super valuable or, or, you know, two or three of these kind of large painted figures would have been really cool, but I'm satisfied with it. And I hope you enjoyed looking at it as well. Let me know what you think of this kind of topic. I realize it's not uh, Java related or even Star Wars related, but it is, you know, related to something that I'm interested in <laughs> in any case. Um, and to be frank with you, you know, there's not a lot going on in terms of Java related things at the moment. So I have to either kind of manufacture something, which, you know, is all, it's fun too, but, uh, may, may, you know, some sort of project or something, or I may have to, to branch out into other areas. And so that's what we're doing today. Thanks very much for watching. And also thanks of course, to my Patreon supporters, including Angelica Brady and Jesper Murtu. Thanks very much for your support.